Teacher, are you a wolf in sheep's clothing? The Bible warns of beware of, of wolves in sheep's clothing. Where are they at, sir? Do you I see, see them? Yeah, yeah, they're everywhere. You see the ones with the black masks? They're yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Do you, do, you, do you hear the word of God being proclaimed anywhere on no, the street? No, I don't. I don't even from you. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Is that not the word of God? Does that, does I, that I bring a, a fear to your soul that, that you're... To about are, you so, are you celebrating the, the, the sin of homosexuality here this afternoon? If, if, it's, if that's true, I warn you. Homosexuality is a sin? The Bible says that. The Bible, I repeat what the God Bible? says that. Who wrote the, Bible? the Word of God is clear. Who, so who wrote the Word of God? Man. That's man's Word, not God's Word. Is that you, your you Word? You cannot purport to is know that, the Word of God, Is that sir. true? You cannot purport to know the Word of is, God. Is that true? How do you know things are true or not? How do you know that all things hold together? That you assume the future is going to be like the past? Sir, so we're, we're out here because we love you. We're out here because we love. And that's what the definition of true love is. is one who would sacrifice their time. One who would sacrifice in order that you might hear the truth of the Word of God. And so we urge you, each and every one of you, to hear the Word of the living God. And to, to turn from this awful practice, this wickedness of when the dinosaurs bite my head off, then I'll, I'll believe. So, you, so you won't believe. So, so we really don't have an evidence problem. We have a heart problem that we love our sins so much. We love our sins so much that we don't want people to tell us the truth. We don't want to hear the truth because it collides with our sinful, lustful desires. We don't want to hear the truth. When someone comes to tell you the truth, you you call that hate speech. I appreciate. Thank you, sir. Repent of this evil place. Turn away from this place and flee the wrath to come. Good morning, Indiana. I want to continue where my brother Mark has left off, preaching and proclaiming to you the good news of Jesus Christ. We come as ambassadors of the King of the universe, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the crucified Savior who died for the sins of the world, who was buried and risen again from the dead. And he ascended into heaven where he is the reigning king. He has all authority in heaven and on earth. And Jesus Christ is reigning now. And he must place all of his enemies under his feet. We come to you proclaim the good news of his gospel, of his kingdom, that Jesus Christ has made a way for sinners to be forgiven of their sins, to be free from the wrath of God that we just so deservedly deserve. I want to read to you from God's holy and eternal word, Psalm 107. Psalm 107 says, Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, prisoners in affliction and in irons, for they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. God's word said there are some who sat in darkness, shadow of death, and they were enslaved to their sins. And their enslavement came because they rebelled against God. Ladies and gentlemen, are you enslaved to your sins, to sexual immorality, to idolatry, to pride? Are you rebelling against God's created order? God created men to be men and women to be women. He created men to lead. To lead women to be pure and holy. He created women to nurture and give life. But our culture has twisted that on its head. And so we rebel against God and how he created us to be. And the scriptures say some set in darkness and in the shadow of death prisoners in affliction and in irons. For they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. They sat in darkness even though they had the light. 
were playing for them. Listen what happens when those rebel against God and says, So he bowed their hearts down with hard labor. They fell down with none to help. My friends, if you are in rebellion to God, your state, your future state, and your state now is a state of slavery, and God's justice and just judgment will rest upon you for your rebellion against God. And God in His justice will cause you to fall down. The Bible says the pride comes before the fall. Furthermore, it says God is opposed to the proud. God is opposed to the proud. The creator God of the universe is opposed to those who set themselves up over and against his just and good rule. Those who think that they know better than the creator God. And therefore, they will live and do as they want rather than as God has made them to live. They think they know better, and in their pride they are puffed up, and they raise their puny, they raise their puny fists up against God. But the God of the universe will not be mocked. He is opposed to the proud, and he will knock you down. And in verse 12 it says, they fell down with none to help. No one to help. If God is against you, there is no one who can help you. If you have rebelled against him, there is none. No Supreme Court, no President, no Governor, no Legislator, no City, no Police Officer. There are no friends. No neighbors, no people in parades that will help you when God is opposed to you. And so, you can flip God the bird, you can continue in your rebellion, but if God is against you, there is none to help. But I want to rep, that's the horrible news, that we deserve the wrath of God. And our rebellion, and our pride, puts us in opposition at war with the God who created you, the God that allows you to have the breath to walk through this parade, the God who allows your heartbeat to continue to beat, the God who gives you the voice to go, woo-hoo! No, thank you, sir. No, thank you, sir. You need, to, you, need, you need to repent of your wickedness. Of all people, Christians should know better than to celebrate blatant sin. Please do not touch our stuff, sir. The truth is, God is opposed to the proud. So listen, I want to share with you the rest, okay? I want you to know I don't hate you. Yes, okay. He reaches out to the pride. 
to the proudful, to the sexually immoral, to the idolater. And in his gracious mercy, he reaches out to those who humble themselves. The Bible says God's opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Young lady, people, if you will humble yourself before the Lord and confess that you don't know what is right, that your circumstances, your sin is out of control, if you will humble yourself and look to Him, if you will cry in the Lord in your trouble, He will deliver you from your distress. He will bring you out of the, the chains that bind you. Our God is a God of great mercy and grace and love. But know this, God loves His people. God loves His holiness. And it's the most unloving thing to encourage people in their wickedness. It's the most unloving thing to encourage people to continue in their sin. But it is loving, it is loving to warn these people the danger of their pride, because their pride puts them at odds with God. God is opposed. What? Right. 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 So, away from this. It's crazy. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. I'll tell you about it. Please. I can stand here. I cannot stand here. No, you can stand there. Is this there. not a public sidewalk? Right? God is opposed to the ground. Why? First question, Christian. When people are awake, when God is there, hey, Christian, you're right. 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 Right.
but what you guys are doing, listen to me. I came from the most strictest upbringing, and I promise you, I've been drinking, but any time that you exclude people from God, and that's wrong, and you invite yourself, I'm inviting everyone to come to the glorious good news and glorious good news. And they rose any kind of food and they drew near to the gates of death. 
But then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. He sent out His word and healed them, and He delivered them from their destruction. Let them thank the Lord for His steadfast love, for His wonderful works to the children of man, and let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving, and tell of His deeds and strong, and songs of joy. The wages of sin is death. In this, as this curse goes by you, look at this as an example. Now it's been appointed once for man to die, and then comes the judgment. Look right here, there's a picture to you of the judgment of God. Death for sin. Look. Look in front of you is a hearse and a casket. A casket showing you death. It's coming at the end of the parade. At the end of the parade, when you paraded your sin, be aware that following the parade is a hearse. A, a hearse. Following your parade, following is death. Parade your sin like something. Death always follows us. Death always is there. And one day we will all face death. It's been appointed once for man to die and then to face the judgment. I can think of no more fitting example than to see right before your very eyes. The wages of sin is death. And you would applaud to pride. Apart from Jesus Christ, there is no hope. One day, your body will be placed in a casket, just like the casket going down this parade. But you will stand before God and give an account. You will give an account of every careless word, every thought, every deed. And what will God say to you, my friend? Will He say, but you, Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. your sin and your pride and arrogance? Or will he say, you humbled yourself and you sought your Lord. You repented of your sins and you were humble and I love you and welcome into my kingdom. And that's the truth, sir. You can humble yourself and repent and look to Jesus Christ and have eternal life. Yes, you do. You're a sinful man. That's, that's what the Bible says. God hates one with iniquity. What did I do wrong? Yes, he did. He actually said that, uh, he said, has God not said for this reason that a man may leave his home and unite with a woman in marriage? God affirmed Thank you marriage. Thank so for being here. Well, you sir, make have, the praise. Did you hear the message? Uh, did you hear the message? The truth sir? is, friends, as you are ending this parade, be aware. Just as this parade ended with a visible picture of death, the parade of your life will end with death. You will die, sir, and you will stand before God. You will stand before God, and you will give an account. You will give an account to God, unless you repent. I was yelling at you earlier. I apologize for my life. My name's Mark, by the way. My name's Tyler. What will God say to you then, sir? You guys, sorry. Do you think he's going to be okay with how you brought to your sexual immorality? What does the Bible say? Because do not be deceived. Well, sexually immoral will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't be deceived. I'm not gay, sir. But I am a sinner. I have, I have rebelled against God and it's apart from Jesus Christ. Just like you. Just like you and your pride, sir. I would be doomed. Pride comes before the fall. A proud heart. God is opposed to the proud. God is opposed to the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. God gives grace to those who humble themselves to cry out to Him, saying, "God, please have mercy on me, because I am a sinner." If you love Jesus, you would not continue to walk in your darkness. You would not be celebrating what God calls abomination. 
Do you think we're not all God's children? Only those who are God's children are those who have the Son. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
that's the only truth that we can we can gain the knowledge about how to have access and even a right relationship with God. And so that's kind of what we're pointing you to is that it's possible for us to get deceived. It's possible that you were deceived. And so how do we make sure that we're not deceived? We go back to the Word of God that shows us the, the truth. Scripture is interpreted in so many different ways by so many different people. The way that so it's impossible to understand human language. It's impossible to understand human language. So if you wrote that statement down on a piece of paper, would it be possible for me to understand what you just wrote? Or would it be possible for that statement to be translated into German and have the person the German speak? You've got to humble yourself. You can, I can understand that. You just said we, we use many forms of different communication. God is opposed to the proud. Scripture is, has, has, been God is opposed to the proud. has literally been interpreted. What do you mean so, by interpretation? Do you mean, do you mean translation? I, I mean, what do you mean by interpretation? I mean, I mean, I mean, um, What's more I mean both translation and, and you and I can read the same sentence. What would be more loving to celebrate them in or to pull them out of the way and get far? But is there a right What would be more answer? loving? Is Yell there a them, right get out of the way, there's a car coming, you're about to die. Or I think say, there could be a right answer, but I think that knowing that right answer... Which I, one is more loving? If you would, hold on, you know if you and I both... And here's the truth. Read something. You are in the danger of the wrath of God. One of us can be right, one of us can be wrong. We love you enough. Or we can't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So who gets to tell us which one's right? To tell you the truth. It has to be a standard, right? Who, right and wrong? Who, 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 who determines the meaning of a, of a piece of communication? Wicked version of love that never challenges anyone. Well, that never speaks the truth. I don't think that there, I, I don't think it can be known. So because, when, because when, I, when you just said that to me, did you mean something by it that I'm that I should try hard to understand? When I said what? Anything you said to me in the last five minutes. No, I could be wrong with all this. No, no, no. I'm saying we trust that when someone speaks or writes, the author yeah. has the authority. That's what author authority means, right? Mm -hmm. Authorial intent. So you, we want to understand what did the author mean? And if you think that's impossible to understand, and every time you stand in a conversation with us, with your wife, with anybody, it's gobbledygook. You assume that real human communication is possible. You assume it all the time. Except when it comes to the Bible, for some strange reason. Right? Well, also also because I'm not I'm not out telling people that they're burning to hell, because, because I think that my interpretation of conversations okay. between my wife and I is... Do you think that one day... If you believed that I was going to die in five minutes if I didn't do something that you knew what I should do. Okay, so would you is, love me, or would you let me say, what you say? Okay, so, so, so this gets actually into what, why I wanted to stop by initially. Because let's say that you guys are right. Again, like, I, this is, we went down a whole road that I'm, again, I just don't think is, neither one of us is, like, we're, none of the three of us are going to change each other's minds on that. But, like, even if, let's say all the people here are going to hell. Let's Morning, say all, like, let's say that that's all right. Should I say good afternoon? My name is David. I'm a pastor. This isn't here. the way to do it. We're here you, because what? How do you we love you. Where are you getting that information from? We're here because you're arbitrary. God you're you're saying that you're the person that tells it how we do things. I think you think so, not. Okay. The way to go. How do you guide your thoughts? Because I know because I have conversations. Because I would guarantee you. So you're assuming that the future is going to be like the past, like an like a like. The sun's going to come up tomorrow because it came up yesterday. Yeah. And so you're basing all your thinking process about what's always happening. But what we're saying is the Bible is the reason that all those things are holding together. The Word of God, the Word of Jesus Christ is how we can say the future is going to be like the past because we have those, the, those logic and reasonable things that we hold on to. But those things are gifts from God that you're using right now and that are pointing you to what you know to be true is that you're going to stand before God one day and you're going to give an account. You know that to be true and so some of those things that you're doing right now you should press and say no that's not true but what we're doing right now is telling you the truth and there's no longer the suppression going on because you're hearing the truth and there's this there's this resistance to you know, coming against your sin i think you guys are going to get further Speaking to people with building relationships, we do that. What, can, can you and I we do that on every occasion? We do that. My church is full of people who used to be homosexuals. We desire for you to, to not go on in rebellion against your Creator. 
Jesus says that either you're for him or you're against him. Either you love him or you're against the gospel. I need to go. God loves Jesus. He hates the things of the world. We don't say that. You're not going to go support this. Yeah, Don't support wicked. I'm sorry to treat people well. That's not a good investment. Jesus says that you love these things. You hate him. Okay, I'm telling the truth. Hey, you're not the dispenser of good analogies. You're walking into a death pit. Because truth do that. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. I do. You don't believe in the truth. You believe as the demons believe. He's like, peace out. The demons believe in Jesus Christ and shudder. They've got one up on you because you're not shuddering. Even the demons hear God's voice and they shudder. The demons believe that God is one and they shudder. And yet we walk day to day ignoring God. There's no fear of God before our eyes. But why should we fear God? It's because God is good. He is holy. He is pure. God is just. You see, if I committed robbery, if I went to a bank and robbed someone, a good judge would punish me in jail for a long time. And likewise, when we stand before God, our righteous judge,
Praise Jesus Christ. We are here to lift up the name of Jesus. That He is good. He is lovely. How you doing? Lord Jesus Christ, you know, support this week in the Sergeant. Yeah. No, no Sergeant is going to those places. Support this week. Jesus, that, that's not good. Jesus, 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 are you ready to stand before your Creator? I desire for you to know. Good afternoon, Indianapolis. My name is Mark Cox, and I'm, I'm here today because I love my Savior, Jesus Christ. I love the God of the Scriptures who commands us to go into the streets and go into the, into the mountains and to go into all the world and to preach the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's how I was saved from the love of myself and the love of my sins. And today I want to share that same good news that God offers and that He offered to me. That you can be set free from the love of yourself. You can be set free from the love of sin. You can be set free. You can have a new heart in the Lord Jesus Christ if you would repent and turn from your sins. My friends, don't go to this place and exchange your soul for a few moments of pleasure. Don't do it. It's not worth it. This place provides no pleasure. Please don't go to this place and support these people. I've heard several times today, well, I'm not gay. I'm not homosexual, but I support my friends. Please don't support this awful, wicked, evil sin. God will not hold you guiltless on the day of judgment. Listen, listen to the word of God that is being proclaimed to you today that you can be set free. You can be, you can be set free from the love of yourself and the love of your sin. Please don't support this place. Don't go into this place. It's not a good investment. You're going to have to live with this decision for the rest of your life because God is judging you right now. And more specifically, Jesus Christ is judging you right now. Jesus Christ speaking to the man who wished to get out of his sins. He said, Lord, why are all these awful things happening? But Jesus said, flee and repent of your sins or these great awful things will happen to you. Don't lose your soul, my friends. Don't lose your soul to a, to a few moments of pleasure. It's not a good investment. The Bible says that you are created in the image of God and you need to bear that image appropriately. You are not bearing the image of God appropriately by coming here and supporting this awful wickedness. And not only that, as you just heard my brother proclaim, it's one thing to be caught in your sins, but it is another thing to go and approve of such things. Three times the Apostle Paul says in the book of Romans, God gave them up when they continue in their sins, God gives them up to a debased mind. And then they can't come up with cogent thoughts anymore. They call good evil. And they call evil good. Is that what's going on here this afternoon? Are you calling this place good? Are you calling the support of the pride of this place good? Please, my friends, come to your senses and recognize what's happening in our nation. We are calling good evil and evil good. That is not a smart investment on your soul don't go to this place and support this place it's not a good investment don't exchange your soul for a few moments of pleasure this place does not offer anything other than death you may think there's a few moments of pleasure but in the end the bible says it is appointed unto man wants to die and then the final judgment so do not forget about what jesus said in john chapter 5 the father judges no one but has given all things to me for judgment so jesus christ is judging you right now he's making an analysis of the place where your feet are right now and it's not good because you came here to support pride the pride of sin and the arrogance of sin jesus christ is judging you right now he is god he is the son of god 
you have a warped definition of what love is. If you think love is what gives you pleasure, you have a warped definition of what love is. Look at the biblical definition of love. It is, Jesus said, greater love has no man than this, then he would lay down his life for his friend. I don't see anyone here laying down their life for a friend except the Christian brothers and sisters who have given up their freedom to come here and exclaim and proclaim the glorious truth about how you can be set free from the love of yourself. That is a sin, the love of self. The Bible says the dangerous times will come when men will be lovers of self. I think we're here. Men are lovers of self. They love their sins. And they love their sins so much that they prop up all sorts of teachers who agree with them. And we come into these places and we support those who agree with us. But anyone who would tell the truth, we hate the truth. You're getting in the way of me having fun. You're getting in the way of the lust, the desires of my flesh. Don't get in the way. Don't interrupt my fun. You're not very fun. The gospel is clear. Flee from the wrath that is to come. Don't lose your soul. Don't give it up. It's not a good investment. Friends, we love you too much not to tell you the truth. Yes, we want to interrupt you from going to this place. We want to interrupt you and see you repent and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can have eternal life. Do not be deceived. The sexually immoral will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And guess what? That's a bad thing if you don't inherit the kingdom of heaven. But Jesus said, those people that I have called, my sheep hear me, and they know my voice. Do you hear the voice of the Lord? Do you know what the voice of the Lord sounds like? It doesn't sound like, come and join me at the gay pride parade. That's not the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord is absolutely clear. There's one way into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. My friends, those gates do not lead into the kingdom of heaven. They lead straight to the pit of hell. For broad is the road to destruction, and narrow is the way to eternal life. Which road are you on? It's evident. My friends, Jesus Christ is judging you right now. What will you say on the day of judgment? Today is the day of judgment. Flee from the wrath of God while you still can, while you still hear His voice. Tomorrow, the only voice you may hear is the lies that you've been telling yourself that this is okay. This is not okay. Based on the authority of the Word of God, you are in sin. I do not judge you, but the Father who sees all things, His eyes are like a flame of fire. He sees right through you. He knows your thoughts. Does that not strike fear into your hearts? My friends, listen to the Word of God. We love you too much not to let you play in the streets. If you were in the streets right now in danger, would it not be loving for me to tell you to get out of the street so you don't get hit by a car? Is it not more loving to tell you that you are on a collision course with the wrath of God and you know it? We're not talking about the God that you don't know. We're talking about the God that you do know. The God that you see in creation. The heavens declare the glory of God. Fear God and give Him glory, my friends. Fear God and give Him glory. That is salvation, so you need to fear God. You need to fear the fierce wrath of God, sir. We love you too much. Not to tell you the truth, but that is an awful, that is an awful representation of God. Represent God in your bodies with everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise Him, all you people. Praise the Lord. Don't waste your breath. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your soul to go into this place and exchange it for a few moments of pleasure. Please, we urge you, please don't go to this place. You're going to have to stand before God and give an account. We don't want that for you. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. He can give you a new heart. If you could ask the Lord for anything, why would you ask God for anything other than a clean heart? You have a wicked and adulterous heart. You seek after signs. Thank you for the love. What love you show. When someone preaches the truth of God's word and interrupts and has love for your soul, you lash out. Praise the Lord, all you people.
this is not the place that you want to go to. This place is full of awful wickedness. I know that because it announces that we're going to be proud about our sin. It's a gay pride parade. Where on earth do you go in a nation that celebrates the love of self? Why would you love your sin? When God commands you to repent, God who has created you in His image has called you, He's called you to bear His image appropriately. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created all things. We are not talking about the God that you don't know. We're talking about the God that you do know. We're talking about the God that you look around God's glorious creation and you fear and tremble the one who created you. And then you begin to suppress the truth and our righteousness. You suppress the truth and say, God's not this great God. He's not a God of love. And you start suppressing the truth with the love of yourself and the love of your sin. And therefore, you come up with all sorts of twisted understandings about the love of God. What's your definition of love? Is it whatever makes me feel good, therefore I'll do it? Say that to the heroin addict. Whatever feels good, do it. The Bible says clearly, Greater love hath no man than this, than he that would lay down his life for his friend. Is that what you woke up this morning and said, I'm going to lay down my life for not only my friend, but my partner, and I'm going to tell them that God does not want us to continue in this sinful behavior. Does it upset you that I love you more than your friends do? Because I am telling you the truth. Your friends are lying to you and telling you that it's okay to do this. It is not okay to do this based on the authority of the Word of God. Listen to me, and all you people, those that would hear, listen to the voice of reason, listen to the voice of truth. If you continue in this path of destruction, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. My friends, don't lose your soul. Don't go to this place and lose your soul for a few moments of pleasure. Flee, flee from the wrath of God. Don't lose your soul. Don't treat this as cavalier. Be serious. This is your life we're talking about. Jesus Christ is judging you right now. He sees all things. The book of Revelation tells us that his eyes are like a flame of fire. He sees you right now. And not only does he see what you're doing, he knows the places that you've been. And it's even worse, he knows your thoughts. If Jesus Christ knows your thoughts, then you need to repent. Because we have a wicked heart. We need Jesus Christ. We need Jesus Christ because I don't need an explanation from anybody because the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible is true. It's always true. It's always relevant. The Bible is true. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's only one entrance into the kingdom of heaven, and that's not it. That's not the kingdom of heaven. That will only give you a few moments of pleasure. That is the gate to hell, and broad is that gate. Broad. It's easy to go because it's easy to find because there are lots of people on this road to destruction. There's lots of people on this road. The Bible says it's a narrow way. It's a narrow road into the kingdom of heaven. And few there be that find it. Few there be that find it because they love their sin so much. They don't want anybody disrupting their fun. They don't want anybody disrupting their pleasure. They love their self so much and they hate the preaching of God's word because it tells us what we're doing is wrong. It also tells us how we can be saved from loving what's wrong, loving our sin, loving pride, loving arrogance. You don't like prideful people. None of you like arrogant people. But what are you going to do? You're going to go and celebrate a pride parade? Being proud? The Bible says that the sexually immoral will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And that's a bad thing. You want to inherit the kingdom of heaven. And that is the road that you need to be on. That road does not offer any satisfaction, any true satisfaction, any true pleasure, anything lasting. Friends, that, that's the place of destruction. That's, that's where the gates of hell are. That's, that's what that leads to. There can only be death that leads in being proud about your sin and, be, and being arrogant about it. Folks, I'm here because we love you. And what would, be, what would be more loving than to tell you that you're on a broad road destruction? What would be more loving than that? To tell you, oh, just keep doing what you're doing and everything will be fine. That's what your friends are telling you. Don't listen 
to the lies of your friends, the lies of this culture that says that it's okay to do this. It's not okay, friends. Flee from the wrath to come. Flee from the love of yourself. Don't prop up for yourself teachers that tell you exactly what you want to hear. Listen to the truth. Open your scriptures. Open the Bible and listen to the word of God that says, I am the way, Jesus said, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What's your definition of love? Greater love has no man than this, than he that would lay down his life for his friends. Please, please, don't count this word of God. Don't count it cavalier. This is a serious matter. This is serious. We love you too much. If the officer saw you in danger, he would warn you that you need to get out of danger, and that's exactly what we're doing. We are telling you that you're in danger. You are on a collision course with God's wrath. And we love you too much not to tell you the truth. Greater love has no man than this than he that would lay down his life for his friends. Folks, what's taking place right now? This is an awful and egregious sin. What has our nation come to that we allow this stuff to take place? Has this taken place all in our care in, in the nature and the in the development of our country? And we think that we're we're more advanced now that we have gay pride parades. We think this is okay. And no police officer is arresting anyone for taking place in this awful thing. You know, so we don't think that our, our nation needs to repent. Please, my friends, don't lose your soul for a few moments of pleasure. Don't lose your soul. Listen to the word of God. My friends, we love you. What is your definition of love? I've heard several definitions of love. I've heard people say, don't judge me. All the while, they're judging me. Hell's gonna be fun. What are you talking about when you come up with these misunderstandings about judgment and love? The Bible says that greater love hath no man than this. He that would lay down his life for his friends. My friends, if you have a, a, a if you have a Jesus that doesn't that doesn't warn you of your sins, then you have a mischaracterization mischaracterization of who Jesus is. What sort of God lets sin go unpunished? What sort of God have we created our nation that says that it's okay and God's gonna be God's gonna be fine once I face him in judgment? The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. What are you gonna say on that day? Are you gonna say I was just doing what everybody else was doing? I hope you grade on the curve. What kind of judge is that? It's not a holy and righteous judge like the scriptures say that Psalm 711 said God is righteous and holy and he's angry with the sinner every day don't lose your soul friends don't lose your soul for a few moments of pleasure don't support this gay pride don't support this that's not being very loving that's not being very loving to your friends you're not being very loving you're, you're telling your friends lies you're not being very loving you're being pretty judgmental and, 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 and not very loving because you're telling your friends that it's okay to do this and you join in. The Bible says when you do that, when you measure yourself by yourself, then you're not wise. And we want to do what the Bible says because it's the only thing that's been true, proven true time and time again. It's never been false. It's never contradicted itself. So believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. says the word of the Lord came to me son of man speak to your people and say to them if I bring the sword upon the land and the people of the land take a man from among them and make him their watchman and if he sees the sword coming upon the land and blows the trumpet and warns the people then if anyone who hears the sound of the trumpet does not take the warning and the sword comes and takes him takes him away his blood shall be upon his own head he heard the sound of the trumpet and did not take the warning his blood shall be upon himself but if he if he had taken the watchman sees the sword coming 
and does not blow the trumpet so that the people are not warned and the sword comes and takes any one of them that person is taken away into his iniquity but his blood I will require at the watchman's hands my friends I don't want to be guilty of not blowing the trumpet when danger comes flee from the wrath of God my friends don't lose your soul the trumpet is sounding warning flee from the wrath to come you are on a collision course with the wrath of God yes. flee from the wrath that is to come we don't have tomorrow we are not promised tomorrow the watchman has blown the trumpet it says beware danger you're heading on a collision course with the wrath of God my friends don't lose your soul don't lose your soul for a moment of pleasure when you know it's not right to celebrate sin you know it's not right to be prideful you hate prideful people you hate arrogant people so why is it that you come here today to be prideful about your sins when you hate prideful people you hate arrogant people that's a hypocrisy statement it's hypocrisy to say that I hate something and then turn around and do the very same thing. My friends, don't lose your soul. You need a new heart. You need a heart that loves Jesus Christ. Flee from the wrath of God. Flee from the wrath to come. You are on a collision course with the wrath of God. Don't lose your soul. Don't exchange it. It's not a great investment. It's a poor investment to come here, pay money, and to celebrate sin, to celebrate the love of your sin, to celebrate, celebrate being prideful about your sin. You need Jesus Christ to give you a new heart. And friends, he can do it. We serve the God who is able. We don't serve. A weak, pathetic God. We serve God who's mighty. Our God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save and He can do it. Call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. Now listen to the word of the Lord that can set you free from the love of yourself, from the love of your sins. Don't exchange your soul for a moment of pleasure. Don't worship yourself. Don't worship other people who are worshiping themselves and are proud about their sin. And they're proud about God's patience. Do you presume on the riches of God's kindness, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance, but because of your hard and impenitent heart, you're storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath. Don't lose your soul, my friend. Flee from the wrath to come. Don't do it. Don't go to this place and celebrate sin. You don't have tomorrow. You're not promised tomorrow. Flee from the wrath that is to come. Today may be your last day, but you are being judged right now. Right now you are being judged. God is looking upon you with eyes like a flame of fire. He sees your sins. Flee from the wrath to come. He sees your sins. Curse. Please, don't go to this place. Don't lose your soul. Flee from the wrath to come. The watchman has sounded the trumpet. I do not want to be guilty on the day of judgment this day I did it. Sound the trumpet. Please don't exchange your soul for this wickedness. It will not satisfy you. There's only death in this place. There's only death.